Welcome to worship this morning. I'm really glad to see all of you here um, and delighted that people show up in all sorts of ways in Zoom, in the sanctuary, in the garden, and you are all welcome anytime. The call to worship, praise. Praise is where our worship begins and ends. Praise is what moves under our feet and stirs our hearts. Praise is what soars across the skies and causes us to question all that we thought we knew. Praise is what we were made for. Praise for earth. Praise for this life. Praise for each other. Let us praise the name of God and lift our hearts in wonder and delight. Our opening prayer. Great galaxies and tiny insects, giant gum trees and redwoods and tiny plants growing in tundra and desert, a speck of sand and planets beyond our comprehension. All of this is the stuff of, our, of your making, O oh God. We can feel so very small in the context of all you have made, and yet you care for us. You love each of us as if we were your favorites. Help us acknowledge you and the world around us. Celebrate your presence and honor you in all we do. Amen. I invite you to sing along. Our prayer of confession. We try to limit you, O oh God. We claim you are male and human, and then you look like us and think like us. Forgive us. Sometimes, too, we limit your creation, not wanting to think beyond ourselves or our own circles. We challenge beliefs that threaten us not wanting to accept worlds beyond our own and life in other forms. Yet you are the cosmic one, creator of things beyond our imaginations. Help us set free our understanding that we might experience you as the cosmic being you are. The Assurance of Pardon. Beloved, hear wisdom speak to you. Hear her assure you in her own words. I was daily God's delight, rejoicing before God always, rejoicing in its inhabited world and especially delighting in the human race. 
let us share in quiet contemplation of this blessing. Thanks be to God. The images from this deep space telescope are astonishing. Astonishing in their beauty. Astonishing to think about the age of the light we're seeing. Light that reaches back to the beginning of the universe. It's like being able to see back in time and across vast distances. It's my prayer that we might feel just as astonished by how much God loves us and how close God really is in the vastness of this universe, how beyond our understanding the divine is. I hope you know we are loved and forgiven <clears throat> and from that can know a sense of peace, which comes from God and nowhere else. You speak, God, and from the void, time and space, matter and energy, love and dark and light come into existence. You speak, and we take shape. You breathe, and we have life. So breathe into our lives again, God, and speak to us in ways we might hear and give us the courage to follow where you lead. Speak, God, your people are listening. Amen. This is the last Sunday that we are celebrating what we call the season of creation. And when I say we, I mean churches all over the world. Uh, it's a month long uh, season when we're attending to different aspects of creation. And today is Cosmos Sunday. And when I saw that on the list, I got all excited about sharing these images from deep space. Uh, Cause each time I see another one come up, uh, my response is mostly, wow. So this morning we have one scripture from the season of creation and one from the lectionary. And we start with Proverbs eight. Uh, verses 22 to 31. And uh, the voice in this text is wisdom. The wisdom of God is speaking. And um, for those who, who don't know, here's, here's your little bit of, of Hebrew language trivia for the day. The word for wisdom in Hebrew is Sophia. So Sophia is speaking in this text. The Lord created me at the beginning of God's work, the first of his acts long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When God had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of soil, when God established the heavens, I was there. When God drew a circle on the face of the deep and made firm the skies above, when God established the fountains of the deep and when he assigned the sea its limits so that the waters might not transgress God's commands, when God marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was with God like a master worker, and I was daily God's delight, rejoicing before God always, rejoicing in this inhabited world and delighting in the human race. And a second reading, study and contrast this from Luke. 
we go from the beginning of all that is to death. A parable from Jesus. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day and had his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus covered in sores who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades, where he was being tormented. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, child, remember that during your lifetime, you received your good things and Lazarus in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us is a great chasm. A great chasm has been fixed so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so. And no one can cross from there to us. He said, then father, I beg you to send him to my father's house for I have five brothers that he may warn them so that they may, so that they will not also have to come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Two seemingly really different pieces of scripture, yes? We have Sophia at the very beginning of creation with God as the foundations of the universe are set as Stars are set spinning in the sky. Wisdom is present, delighting God and delighting in humanity and all creation. Attending to the depths and the margins, the edges and all of life, all that exists. And then we have the rich man and Lazarus at the end of their lives each receiving something they did not have in this life. One lamenting, one presumably reassured and resting. Two really different stories. And as I was thinking about these texts and Cosmos Sunday and where it is we are as people and what kind of struggles and questions we come up with, kept coming back to the story in Luke and thinking about the people who sit at our gates and how Lazarus longed for the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table, longed for leftovers. Do you know how sometimes leftovers taste even better than they do the day you make them. Lazarus received evil in this life. 
He was alone and wounded and hungry. While the rich man ate sumptuous feasts. Note that I'm not adding anything to this story. I'm using the language of Luke. If anyone else feels convicted by that story, you are not alone. It makes me think about what is sumptuous in my life and what I might have to share. Now, some people read this gospel and what they hear is judgment and condemnation. And most of us, when we hear those things, hightail it the other direction. No one wants to hear judgment. No one wants to hear condemnation directed toward themselves. They might like it when it's directed at somebody else, particularly someone that they disagree with or dislike. None of us want to hear it when it's coming our direction. And so I'm thinking about why is Jesus telling this parable at this point in time? And it occurs to me that Jesus, God incarnate, knowing what kind of life he will live, knows what it is to be both Lazarus and the rich man. Jesus, as God on earth, gives away everything he has for the sake of those of us who hunger for crumbs that fall from the table, who think leftovers sound delicious and dream of them without receiving them. Jesus, unlike Lazarus, will come back from the dead and tell stories and make breakfast and break bread so that all are fed. Jesus isn't telling us, us this story after we die. Jesus is telling us this story while we live. We don't have to die and be on the far side of the chasm to learn the wisdom of this parable. He's telling it to us in this life, here and now. So if we have something to share, we have the opportunity. And if we hunger, Maybe we take some reassurance in knowing that evil doesn't win. And then I was thinking about how often I feel daunted by the needs of the world. Even addressing homelessness here in Springfield. I have these conversations every week. What can we do? What's possible? And there are lots of really good ideas and lots of people who are generous and organized. And still, the challenges of the world can feel daunting and overwhelming. When I look at the images from the Deep Space Telescope, I am awed by the magnitude of the universe. When we see these images where each light is its own galaxy with billions and billions of stars and more planets than I would even know how to begin to count. I can feel so very small, so little as to be inconsequential. Anybody else? Tiny. Here's the thought that occurs to me. God is as vast and more so 
as we have seen of the universe and more. And God is also as close to us as the breath Lazarus and the rich man draws. Even the breath the dogs draw. God is the sumptuous feast and the crumbs that fall from the table. God is the storyteller and the story and the actions inspired by that story. God is transcendent and beyond us and intimate and within us and between us all at the same time. We don't have to solve all of the world's problems. We are called to love and to share what we have so that no one is alone. No one's wounds go untended. No one goes hungry. Because this God of ours, this vast transcendent God is also intimate and close and the very breath we breathe. We don't learn any secrets after we die that might have saved us in this life. God doesn't keep secrets. The beauty and abundance of God are spread out across the universe and in our daily lives. That we might celebrate and we might share for all of those gifts close and far, for all of the surprising ways God shows up in ways we recognize and maybe not. Thanks be to God. I invite you to sing with me. Whenever we gather, we dedicate ourselves to the God of the universe, the cosmic Christ who moves with love of the spirit in wisdom and Sophia between us. 
we have gifts to share. And there are people who are hungry and alone and hurting. May God bless all of our gifts for the sake of each one who needs and for the care of all creation. All that exists is yours, great God. Now we give a portion to your church to continue doing your work in the world. Take these gifts and use them to fulfill your visions for the world. In all the ways we give of ourselves, bless the giving and receiving. And hear us as we pray the way Jesus teaches us. Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to sing one more time. Maybe I'll invite you to enjoy these images for a moment. Earth's atmosphere looking toward the moon.
the creator spirit, the cosmic Christ, and Sophia, holy wisdom, are present all around us. Feel them. Know them. And be aware with, of them within you as you go out into the world. Amen. Thank you.